guys. How are you both? Good, good. how are you? Yeah, good. I'm liking the hat, Greg. That is pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> I need to get one for myself. Um, I, I really enjoyed the movie. I watched it today uh, and I just, yeah, it's really, <laughs> well, I know I only watched it today, but it's really stuck with me. It's got a really indelible atmosphere that I can't seem to shake, which is a good thing. Cool. Um, but I'm going to begin with you, uh, Lauren. I mean, you've worked with Amelia before, so I guess it was yeah. just a bit of a no-brainer signing up to, to work with her again. It was definitely a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, so Amelia kind of got brought onto this project as a director. She didn't write this one, but um, it was sort of a last minute thing um, for her. And when they were trying to cast Grey, obviously I, I know Amelia from working on Bleed With Me and even before then. So she knew that I'm a real life queer person. I'm a real life singer, musician. Um, so I think it was kind of, you know, her instinct to just reach out to me first. And um, and yeah, it was, it all moved very quickly, but, um, as soon as Amelia kind of approached me with it, I was like, there's essentially no question that I'm going <laughs> to, that I, that I want to do this movie. And, you know, it, ch it checks all the boxes, werewolf, queer, pop star. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, all those sort of regular, um, werewolf, queer pop star movies that have, yeah, you know, the classic tale. Yeah. <laughs> And Greg, that's, that's, your, that's your tinder bio right there that's my like, tinder bio yeah so yeah that should be it will be what's the initial attraction for you greg and, and then what was and as, what was it like to, to collaborate with with amelia on this one um so i i was um shooting a movie with um uh, mike and wendy before christmas called marlene which is uh, based on a canadian story about this guy named stephen truscott who was on death row at uh, 14 years old and and then how he sort of, and was wrongly convicted and, and how he put his life back together and then they approached me they they said they had the script about a, a you know a werewolf and and there was sort of an interesting twist on it and asked if I might be interested and they sent me the script and I liked it um and um and then I went out and then got to meet Lauren and Amelia and Catherine and what a bloody pleasure that was <laughs> real. Like, it, it really was yeah. like you know you don't you, you, I've been I've done a lot of stuff and you meet people and you know I always have a good time on set or most times have a good time on set but I was so impressed with um the talent um uh, the integrity the just this this great adventurous spirit that they all had I think that the the Amelia handled uh she was pretty ruthless with the script which was good she really cut it down to what it needed to to be and cut any extraneous stuff away yeah. I thought Lauren was spectacular loved working with her she has an unbelievable voice I was really really hard to to have to listen to her sing and just a great person so it was this um like I felt like the old dog on set, which was really kind of nice. Like it was, it was invigorating. And I think that they all had such um, interesting perspective on the material. I think they're all wonderfully creative and um, it's just nice. Every once in a while, it's like, it's nice to come to work and be surrounded by good people. Yeah. You can't underestimate how nice it is for things to be nice. <laughs> yeah, no, really to enjoy people and to like, because it's the work can often be, long and it can be draining and if you enjoy the people and if you have a sense of humor about things then it makes everything um much more pleasurable yeah even on the day with the mouse Greg. And I, I knew we're not even <laughs> two minutes into the first i knew two minutes this is this is cyber bullying right here <laughs> what's happening right now he's used like, to you're going to be a witness because i don't know who enjoys rodents yeah. as a thing um, I may be in like a maybe a ratatouille if I was watching that right. rat on the Pixar animated rats are fine. We had to do a scene with the mouse and it was a real mouse and I think from a long line of ferocious mice because this thing was terrifying and and I'm I'm not gonna lie I might have been less than heroic in my handling of <laughs> the spreader of the plague. Um, yeah, I'm never. But, gonna uh, but you videotaped it, Lauren videotaped it once and posted it on social media a number of yeah, times. Yeah, I did. I did. It was a beautiful, it was a very real, authentic moment that I thought needed to be captured. <laughs> it's a shame we didn't make it into the final cut. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and because Lauren, I was going to ask, as a creative a woman in, in, well, as, sorry, as a woman in the creative industries, have you was there lots you could relate to with this character and, and with dealing with with people like Vaughn and, and and meeting people like that in and that you might encounter kind of along along the way? Oh yeah, big time. I think I think like any any artist would probably relate to Gray's character in this film. I know that Lowell, who co-wrote it, um, she's a musician songwriter, and it really came from. Um, you know, her own life. It was very much like a, a story about what she was going through when she was trying to write her second album and experiencing writer's block and trying to, you know, push through that and kind of fight the monsters that are inside of her, trying to just stop her from creating and or being the artist that she knew she could be. Um, and yeah, I've, I've definitely experienced that. I think, I think, oftentimes artists get in their own way. Um, you know, that's happened to me so much in the past where, you know, with imposter syndrome or whatever, whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, I definitely saw a lot of myself in gray and it was pretty cathartic to be honest, <laughs> to do this movie and, uh, and kind of work through that as gray and, um, you know, have, have the, the real, creative monster inside become revealed <laughs> yeah and i thought well, as yeah. greg mentioned it's just an incredible voice and it's great that you had the chance to sort of showcase oh, thank you for the character but greg have you got any hidden musical abilities or not even hidden just <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah no i sing i sing poorly uh, i play guitar like a rank amateur um, <laughs> i am i'm 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 just talented enough to put people off yeah. Yeah, no, I just, I just like, look, I can noodle around. I can play the guitar a tiny bit and I can, you know what I can do? I can sing shallow. My daughter and I sing shallow. I can, I can do a great shot. We could have done a shallow. Lauren Morgan. I don't know sequel. why you didn't bring it up. Why? why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you didn't bring it up. Um, at least you're good um, advice. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm sorry. Snakes and mice and big spiders. Like I'll kill them if I have to protect my family for sure. Yeah, but God, it was not a not a, not a great, thing. and it was captured on film, which is amazing. Amazing. And I was going to ask too, uh, Greg, about just working in these kind of stripped back sets and sort of less mm. cast members. Is it is that does that allow you to sort of have more focus on the character? Do you quite enjoy being in a set that seemed that is that has sort of less people there? You know, it's I, I I've been I've been blessed that I I get to bounce between like when you have a smaller cast and crew it, it is much it's very much a family feel um you know there's there's certain limitations i guess in what you can do technically but i think there's a great sense of camaraderie there's an intimacy amongst people relationships get formed when you're on a, a real big picture it, you tend to all be just pieces in a machine and everyone is is isolated and does their own thing and you don't you can't just the the scale of it you just can't have that that sense so um I, I quite enjoy it i you know as a canadian actor a lot of the stuff i do is is you know smaller independent pictures and projects but there's something to be said for heart and for ambition and for creativity and at the end of the day when they yell action and it's you and another actor sharing a moment i don't care how big the sound stage is that's just that truth is the truth of two people and I think you can find that anywhere. And I think we found some of those moments here, which was nice. I mean, it's also a werewolf movie. Like, I'm not going to get too saccharine about the whole thing. I mean, it's been into wolves. Like, there's that as well. But, yeah. but we had a nice relationship. Lauren and I were able to create a nice relationship. Yeah. I mean, obviously there are the werewolf elements, but Lauren, do you have to treat, do you almost have to treat characters with just complete humanity and ignore the kind of supernatural elements in order to kind of find that connection to the role at hand? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, I think that was part of the of the vision behind having the the physical um, effect, like the sorry the practical effects actually on my body. So so none of this was done in post. Everything that you see is, you know, what I was wearing on the day, what Greg was wearing on the day, um, and I think that was you know partially due to budget, <laughs> of course. But I think um, it was very exciting to Amelia and to myself because. I think Amelia really wanted the the human to really show through the monster. Whereas I think in a lot of werewolf films, there's like this complete, you know, 180 to from a human to a monster. Um, 
but Amelia was really interested in, and I think this is why this movie kind of stands out in a way is, is you can really see the humanity still behind the monster. Like you can still see if Greg or I are emoting that really shows up on the face still. Um, so yeah, it was really, I, I think it's, it speaks a lot to what Gray is too, you know, it's, it's trying to show that she, she has this monster inside of her, but she's still human. Um, so it was cool to kind of see those things working at the same time. And what was the, the juice yeah. of the meat in the fridge? Was that like strawberry juice? I mean, I'm sure it wasn't actually blood. But <laughs> no, I just... I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it, I think it honestly was, you know, either water or some kind of, it, it must've been water that was just colored with, um, like food coloring and I think probably a bit of like corn syrup to make it a little more viscose. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But yeah. everything I ate was delicious. So and um, you meant you mentioned obviously having about the that the, one of the elements to this is having a, a gay protagonist in this. And of course it's as as it's sort of bit lesbian visibility in sort of mainstream media is such an important thing. But is it also equally important that, that it wasn't necessarily a plot line here. It, the film isn't about her being gay. He's just yeah. gay. And that's almost yeah. more progress, isn't it? When we kind of don't notice it in some ways. Yeah, exactly. And that's another thing that drew me to this movie was that that isn't, you know, normally when you see uh, gay people or queer people in a film, that's, you know, that's like the entire, if they're the main character, that's the entire plot is like them coming out or, you know, kind of, you know, dark stuff that comes with um, realizing that you're queer or coming out and stuff like that. And um, it was really cool to me to just see a, a gay couple just like being the main couple in the movie and it's it's and you get to you know, spend the whole time coming out as a werewolf instead yeah. of as gay. exactly <laughs> exactly which i mean yeah that's the kind of progress we need is we need <laughs> actually true. to create more room for werewolves to come yeah. out yeah, um, so <laughs> yeah definitely progressive though like to just see this couple you know and that was amelia's goal too was just to have this couple like nothing's different than if it was just a straight couple um, which is so refreshing to see. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I was reading, it says um, on, the, on your IMDb that you gravitate towards projects that feature gay characters. I was just, I was just wondering if that's something you kind of need from the offset, or would you, would you go for a role that is straight and think maybe you could speak to the writer or producer and say, could we bring that element into this story? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think one of my goals with my career is that I want to represent my community. I want to... Um, you know, you know, maybe bring to mind that a character could be queer that people might not have thought initially when they were writing it could be that way. I know when I audition for, for roles, my one of my famous lines is, she's not gay, but I'm gonna make her gay. <laughs> so that's kind of my, uh, my, my personal goals that I've set for myself. And yeah, just, just representing the community, maybe opening people's eyes that you know, to, to create more parts where, for queer people that they might not have seen before. Um, yeah. And Greg, you can go into roles and say, if they don't wear a cowboy hat, I'm not taking it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say that they weren't written that way, but they're going to be wearing cowboy hats. That's how, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This, yeah. We all have ceilings to break through and I don't think cowboys <laughs> get their due anymore. They had their day and they need to have it again. Um, <laughs> it's funny, like, I mean, this is, whatever but I didn't realize like I didn't know that in real life that that was part of that Lauren and Catherine were both queer is the word so you know it just goes it's it, it was such a human story that we were it was like we were quite a bit into shooting when we went out for dinner or I, I looked you guys up on maybe on Instagram or something yeah um but I, I think that it's we're at a point where just human stories are more interesting and the less checking of boxes and the more telling of just human stories and sharing our the, the common themes that we all share is is probably the best kind of progress because yeah. I mean I, I'm, I'm interested in people I'm not so much interested in lectures so I think that it's really uh, I think that to, to have it just be a story and like what what character couldn't be queer really um, unless, of course, they're inherently like the whole point is that there's some sort of straight theory or something like that. But it's nice. It's nice when progress is just organic. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. like, yeah, and you mentioned it being a human story. It's about considering it's a film about a yeah. whale. It's so, right. it's, so right. it's, it's, it's <laughs> human. No, it really is. I really enjoyed it, and I best of luck with the release. But uh, my time's done now. But um, oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> but thanks so much for time today. And, and yeah, thanks, we'll Stephen. Yeah, yeah, take care. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank take you. care, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.